Hey, this is Krisha Turner, and you're watching Flav Unit TV with Natasha Castle. Power 98.3. On air, online, on the streets. What's up, y'all? You're watching Flav Unit TV with myself, Natasha Castles, and I have the most beautiful Krisha Turner with me right here. How are you doing? I'm good. How about you? Good. Eh? You are absolutely gorgeous, I must say. Oh, uh, thank you. I appreciate and, um, it. And if you guys don't follow Krisha Turner on Instagram, you must. Um, I I think I Instagram stalk you uh, <laughs> as much as I can. I'm like, she's just so beautiful. She's classy and everything. And one of the things I found out on there is you do have a love for pandas. Yes. I, yes, I have a fun. Explain this a love for weakness. pandas. I don't know, but I've just always had it. I've always had it. I got a stuffed animal. Um, I think my mom said I was like six months old and it was my favorite stuff. It was a panda. Mm -hmm. His name was Lee Ling and he was my favorite stuffed animal. Like I still have him to you this day. I still have him to this day. And every other stuffed animal I've ever purchased throughout my adolescent years was a panda. And I just have a thing. I love pandas. Do you have like a weird collection of pandas now? <laughs> I guess I do. Like I, I imagine like some I type of shrine. <laughs> I have a couple ones. <laughs> I got them. I got one in China because, of course, and then I adopted one via the World That's Wildlife a nice Foundation. Way to, like, travel and just like collect. You have mm -hmm. to get a, like a panda. Yes, exactly. That's funny. So. All right. So, in commemoration of her love for pandas, I did get you a little something. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you'll like it, but here we go. Oh my God, this is so cute. Your panda cookies. Can you guys see that? Here, let's open it up. I was like, I got these and I was like, wait, I wonder if she's going to want to eat the pandas. These are so <laughs> cute. And then I got them. I kind of want to. No one's them. ever got me panda cookies before. There we go. Here, I'm going to hold one up for them. Panda I cookies. <laughs> I thought they were so cute. I never understood pandas until I saw these and I was like, oh. I they're so adorable. You've seen me like post like different panda yes. cakes. And, and I feel like it's been more recent. Like I never knew it before until like now. Like before you're the there only was longer periods between them. Mm -hmm. And now I've just come across this plethora of panda greatness. And now she's got panda <laughs> fever. I think that might be signs for uh, baby fever. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Hold on. Hold on. Wait but, a minute. <laughs> but one other small little tip about or like fact about pandas is I like to say because I'm black, white and Asian. Mm -hmm. So pandas are black, white and Asian as well. Yes, that, That's nice. Uh, I <laughs> guess I would put that. I'm well, I guess I can't be a panda. I'm black, white and Mexican. So I can't. Hmm. I can't. Is I don't there know a what black and white animal that is from Mexico? Not that I know of. Maybe mm -hmm. if a panda made love to a grizzly bear. Whatever. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> Canadian Jamaican, right? Yes from Canada and you've uh, done your thing out there and now you're here. Yes, yes. My whole thing, you know, I've had, a, I've been blessed to have a lot of success mm -hmm. in Canada and so my goal now is I've, 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 I've crossed the border and have set my sight on the American territory and have been working on a project specifically for the American market. I wanted people to understand what I do with my music and also give them an elephant, an element that I felt that, you know, they would love and appreciate and that we would be able to connect via in a sense. So yes, US bound. US US, US here. You are US here, <laughs> planting the soil. Uh-huh. Um now your roots are Jamaican. Yes. I know you spend a lot of time with your past album. Um in Jamaica, yes. writing that, the double disc. Yes. Um, tell me more about your time in Jamaica and writing the record. And I know you got married there also, right? Yes, I did. So Jamaica has a long standing history. For me, my family, we would go to Jamaica every year, whether it was Christmas or summer. And then I actually went to uh, some of high school in Kingston in Jamaica. Oh, nice. And um, I honestly owe Jamaica my career i started singing when i was 15 after i moved to the island so it's because of jamaica that i'm in this industry today it's just being amongst the musical culture that jamaica is that i fell in love with singing and and have gone on the path of music for the you know what i mean mm -hmm. um but for my sophomore album which was released in canada it was called tropic electric double disc one disc tropic one chip one electric 
uh, the Tropic, I recorded all of that in, in, Jamaica. in Jamaica. So for a good year from 2009 all the way to 2011, actually, I was going back and forth. So at the time, I oh, was wow. actually, yeah, I was living in Phoenix at the time. And I would do two weeks in Kingston, come back for two weeks here. Two weeks. And I was two doing... Two weeks at a time? Two weeks at a time. So and I'm trying to record an album. Well, well, that's what I was... That's what the two weeks oh, in okay, Kingston was. Okay. So I was recording for two weeks and then I'd come back and visit home and all that stuff. And, um, but yeah, it was, it was done all in Kingston. One of my favorite videos off of that, the, is the rock, paper, scissors. Yes. <laughs> How much fun was it recording that? It, it, <laughs> it's funny. Cause I see you, you're super sexy. You're keeping this like super straight face when these men are just, they're getting it in. I love, <laughs> they have a whole different dance style, which yes. I love. I, I feel like, I feel like the men dance more than the women do over there. Well, it's part of the Jamaican culture. Like they dance, like one thing that viewers wouldn't know just a tidbit this 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 music video i shot in kingston with over a hundred male dancers on set that was my next question i was like is this real like is it did yes. they double it is this special effects in no, here no we had wow. mass dudes on set <laughs> well and then on top of that um in jamaica in the dance hall community dance crews are like celebrities so all of these guys were part of famous dance crews within Jamaica. So it was like having an all-star set to the Jamaican community of like, you know, so you think you can dance. Like it was like having a whole cast America's of dance, dance crew or, or yeah. some or one of those shows. Like all of those people are celebrities. They all come up with dances and it's it's just part of the, the dance hall culture. So they were teaching me different dance moves and yeah, when I'm sitting there I had to keep a straight face, but trust me, they had me I was dying all day. They are pure jokes. It was such a fun day. It was such a fun shoot. That's fun. Um, I noticed that in some of your past music, I feel more of like a poppy feel. And I feel like with this new record, uh, give me that. I feel like more of a, your Jamaican is really like, before you hear it a little bit, there's a hint of it. But this one is just blatant. blatant. It's like here I'm Jamaican, Canadian, I'm here to stay. Like you with it or you're not. Well, see, here's the thing that a lot of my fans or, or new listeners don't know. But before I got signed, I got signed back in 2006. And before I got signed, I worked the underground hip hop scene doing a mixture of R&B and dance hall mm -hmm. and hip hop. And it was when I got signed that the label took me and flipped me to pop. That's what happens. That's what happens. That's what so with success in this industry, artists start to gain back their control mm -hmm. over over as the years go by. You gotta, so like, for prove yourself to them. Basically. Then. So they trust your opinion. Yeah, okay, fine. But I know it's frustrating. <laughs> it's frustrating. But at the same time, I feel like everything happens for a reason. Uh, reason and timing is everything and for me you know I'm at a different point in my life I'm much older you know what I mean I've matured a lot I feel much more confident of the things I'm speaking of because it's much more sexy it has mm -hmm. much more of a swag to it and attitude and you know I can honestly say sometimes uh, you know in my early 20s you there's days where you're still finding yourself so you don't always know or have the same confidence as mm -hmm. I feel I have now yeah, have. so to me like I said it's all about timing I'm basically doing you know a slight evolution of what I used to do before I was signed but to me it is the first project that I've done and given to the public that has been uninfluenced by corporate no, by corporate basically mm -hmm. yes i like the way you said swag swag <laughs> that's how we say it in jamaica swag swag mm -hmm. so they do say it over there we do swag, say swag. there's actually a dance too that they there's call a swag dance we'll yeah. get to that next the swag <laughs> dance yes krisha turner is gonna see teach me how to swag <laughs> all right we got the dougie they got the swag yes um so you are you're, you're still signed uh yes okay in, in canada i was originally signed out in the u.s and everything that we're doing here in America right now is because I was a free agent we actually have multiple labels that are kind of, that are interested in this project now that Ooh, people have heard it but at the same time I don't know sometimes just you now like because of the right internet now. yes I love my liberty right now because I've I've had to sit you know uh, just just a victim or what would you call it I was just always like stuck to the label's pet. timeline basically a pet mm -hmm. so for this is the first time like I said you know, we have all multiple labels interested and um, just where I am right now, it kind of feels like with the Internet and the stories of people like The Weeknd or Drake or mm -hmm. whoever and where or they started. Make your own plat you have a platform mm -hmm. now. Now you're able to just build on it with the Internet. 
exactly mm-hmm. so a part of me is kind of juggling like yeah it's exciting that we had you know this big buzz going on in LA because I'm out in LA right mm-hmm. now and the LA scene in the industry studios and we had different A&Rs and different so and so coming from labels we've taken a couple meetings and things um, and it's exciting to he- receive that kind of energy like oh wow like people are really vibing with it because you know as an artist, we all, we love all of the stuff that we create and of think course. it's the best. But now you want everyone else <laughs> yes, to. Yes, but now that we it. had all these people talking about it all, and when we dropped the single, we had a whole bunch of like people who I looked up to as a child tweeting about it and commenting about it. It's, Ooh, it's who was tweeting about it? We had Missy Elliott tweeted Ooh. about it. Uh, T Boz. Definitely see you working doing some. Mystery. That would be yeah, amazing. T Boz tweeted about it. She's like, finally something new and refreshing. We had Tank tweet about it. We had Royce to Five Nine tweet about it. Um, Raekwon, yes. yeah, Raekwon tweeted about it. So we've had just a couple. Like I haven't even met met any of these artists. But it's Do you know what I mean? Exciting to have someone that you grew up with, someone you look up to, like you exactly. Know, notice your work. Like, I like. I'm listen, done. I can listen. Edit it. I'm good. Listen, like T Boz, <laughs> like when I was. What was that, like 96? I remember Uh taping like the Grammy Awards performance (laughs) to Waterfalls and like learning the whole routine. (laughs) Like I used to idolize them. Like I loved TLC. Do you have any of these screenshots saved? Like (laughs) tweeted me. Yes, I do. (laughs) Trust me. I'm going to keep this to myself. This is an iPhone scrapbooking (laughs) folder in here. (laughs) I was in shock. I'm like, "This this is so dope. But yeah. Um, what? Tell me about the new single, the "Give Me Dad." Give me dad. Give me that is Give me that. <laughs> is I don't know how to describe it. It's me taking the same the Jamaican influence, the dance hall character, my Jamaican Canadian. You know, I wanted to be able to speak. It's kind of like I'm doing like the the more modern urban um, Harry Belafonte. Like I wanted mm-hmm. I wanted the common people or whether it's Americans or Canadians, to understand it. Because if you speak in the straight, like, patois in the Jamaican accent, like, you probably wouldn't understand anything I say. But I still love it. I love (laughs) it. I love the reggae dance. I don't know what they're saying, but I'm dancing. (laughs) So I wanted to kind of blend it and take, you know, like I said, the Jamaican-Canadian, so it's a little bit more legible. And then it's over American hip-hop production. Mm -hmm. Uh, Young Yanni, who's the producer that I teamed up with for this whole project, um, he's worked with industry heavyweights, Everybody from Busta, he had a bunch of songs on Little uh, Wayne's mm-hmm. album. He produced Say Ah for Trey songs, but okay. the list of people that he's worked with worked is with. is is amazing. So for me to have found him and connected with him, and for us to now be like a family, like he's like my big brother now, and we're all excited about this project, making music. It just feels so good to have like the fusion. Like he's the American element, you know what I mean? I'm that Jamaican Canadian element, and the music that we're creating, I feel, is a demonstration of a perfect blend of those worlds. Now, is he working with you on this whole project? What's the the new album? Is uh, evolution is inevitable? Uh, evolution oh. is uh, evolution inevitable. Yes, E-I. I like that. It Pound E-I. E-I. Ooh, I. I like that. We haven't we haven't even necessarily confirmed it, but this is one of the names that. Me and Yanni started hashtagging uh, when we were tweeting about it. Because like what you said earlier, this isn't like a new you per se or a more evolved you, uh, more mature. So I Mm -hmm. I feel like it fits great. Yeah, we thought it fitted great. So we started hashtagging it. Evolution inevitable. Mm -hmm. Hashtag evolution inevitable, Mm -hmm. (laughs) y'all. What are some musical influences uh, that you see today? Like besides like the older ones, T-Boz. Um, is there anyone today that you look up to that I look up to in general I'm a big fan of music although most of the music that I listen to sounds nothing like what I do so I don't even know if that's sometimes relevant it's hard to, true because it's, sometimes it's hard to look at other things and you don't want it to well honestly when I'm what your style because especially you're doing something so different which yeah. I love um, you don't want it to I hear you for me I'm about Normally, when I'm in the recording phase, I often avoid radio. I it's only I that. only listen to dead people. <laughs> That's some like Billie Holiday. <laughs> I like that. Only listen to dead people when you're recording. Because it's true, though. Like you hear all these lawsuits and stuff and people saying that you copied. But 
I honestly have have seen where you know you're thinking of a melody and it's you're doing it subconsciously. You're not doing it intentionally mm-hmm. just because you know you might have heard a song recently when you're at the grocery store and weren't fully paying attention and somehow you're humming it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So for me, the safest bet has always just been to lock off all, everything that's current and kind of just you know tra- time time transport myself back you know a decade or so and just listen to that kind of stuff i do always i'm always listening to current dance hall music so dance hall it's my absolute favorite (laughs) it's funny because when the dance hall comes on at the club my friends know i'm at the on the dance floor already i'm (laughs) gone natasha's zip gun gone that's awesome um any do you have any weird rituals when you perform like okay we're i'm out like like when I perform, you have to eat. I have to eat grapes. Or, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, some people are weird like that. Trust me. I, oh, I've seen the list. <laughs> yeah. Like, for me, it's for me. It's just I normally, um, whether it's my band or my last tour that I did, I had a DJ and and two backup singer slash dancer girls. For me, it's all about you know we'll always say a prayer like before before we go on, and and um, the one odd thing that I do is I kind of jump. Like, you know how sprinters, when they're about to run, mm. like, the 100 meter, like, you see yeah, the same yeah. both, and they do kind of, they do kind of that jumping. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, I don't know what it is. But warm yourself some, up. Yeah. Like. There's just, you kind of get a little bit of adrenaline from that. That's why they even do that in track. Uh-huh. I used to yeah, run track. Definitely. So they, you get that, you get the, you get the Muscles adrenaline going, pumping and so. the muscle, like, mm-hmm. all that. So for me, when I, right before I go on stage, I do uh, track runner jumps. If that <laughs> <laughs> Just track runner jumps. Yes, yeah. Thank you for watching Flavina TV. Krisha Turner and the Pan Bear Cookies. Yes. You're, you are going to off, maybe off camera. I don't know if we'll do it on camera. She's going to su- teach me how to swag now. Swag. Yes. <laughs> Flavy New TV, Power983FM.com. Krisha Turner, Natasha Castles, thank you so much for stopping by, my love. Thank you for having me. Power98.3. <laughs> on air, online, on the streets. <laughs>